welcome, golfers. I'm Kevin Haim. This is my wife, Lisa Haim. And uh, this is Brooke Henderson and a bunch of really happy juniors in behind us. Uh, you're about to watch uh, uh, the clinic that Brooke put on for us at our event, right? At least tell everybody what our event was and when it happened. So it was Tuesday, May 8th, Kids to the Course Classic. Uh, we host it at Eagle Creek every year. It's the 11th year, and we've always been lucky enough to has Ping, uh, have Ping as our sponsor. And uh, the last three years, they've been able to provide Brooke Henderson uh, to come for the day. Brooke and Brittany spend the day with us. And this year, they asked for more kids to get involved. We always had a little, little bit of a smaller clinic. This year, it was a bigger clinic. Yeah, it was a great deal. We, we got 150 kids there. We gave out little golden tickets, spread them out to all the PGA pros in our zone and our area here. And uh, uh, the kids came with their parents. We had about 250 people there. It was interactive, about 45 minutes. You see Brooke, the athlete. You see uh, the kids just ecstatic with her. And, you know, uh, very important to note, and I, I certainly want to interject here, that this is at our fundraiser for the Kevin Haim uh, Junior Golf Initiative, right, at least, which we started how long ago now? We're 11 years in, yeah, yeah. which is amazing. It's yeah, been really, really neat. We wanted, to, uh, we wanted to give back, right? I mean, yeah. we uh, both grew up at the Hunt Club. My dad was a pro, actually, here in Ottawa at the Ottawa Hunt Club for 42 years, and I know your parents were big golfers. You were a big golfer as a junior league. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we just felt at this point in our career we wanted to give back uh, somehow. And this seemed like the perfect way. Golf was so good to us. And, it's and such golf a big was part a great way to spend our summers as kids, right? You, you are with like-minded people. It's a wonderful environment. The adults treat you great. There's so much you learn from it. We wanted to be able to have, give other people that experience. Right. And then being golfers, we love that it teaches about rules and etiquette and integrity and honor and honesty and you know there's so many great values that come along with our game resilience in playing so uh we started the kevin Hame junior golf initiative and we've given out 650 some memberships in 11 years now yep. and we've seen some amazing things we've got kids uh, we've got a, a one young junior at columbia university in the ivy league on a golf mm -hmm. scholarship we've got a couple more scholarship kids uh, we've had whole families join once the little boy or girl start playing the game. So the initiative has been really cool. The fundraiser has been a big success. We've got a lot of great sponsors with big hearts and a lot of generosity. But this is the cool factor here. I mean, watching Brooke hit balls and watching the kids really, really cements the whole legacy of what we're doing. It's pretty neat. Oh, it was amazing. We even had some families show up like an hour before the clinic. The kids were just so excited to be there and and. Yeah, one you guy told see. me that his daughter didn't sleep the night before. Yeah. She couldn't get to sleep. So that, that's, that's, that's the great. magic of right. it. And, and I would like to say Brooke's a local girl and uh, just, just epitomizes the values of small-town Canada. You know, she's from a little place called Smith Falls, just on the outskirts of Ottawa here. And uh, she and her sister are best friends. Yeah. It's authentic. They're really great people. They've got a lot of faith. We spent time with their whole family now, right? I've gotten to know them all, and it's really neat to watch what she's doing and what she will do for Canadian golfers. And I think that's what people love. When you when you look at the clinic, you'll see that really comes through. Brooke and Brittany are honest. They're nice people. You really get that value coming from them, and I think that's what draws people to them. Yeah, my favorite little moment in the clinic, although I love hearing the sound of the ball being hit and that's why I brought all the kids down. I don't know if you can tell, but we brought a bunch of kids out of the bleachers right behind where Brooke was hitting to really see that club hit, hit that ball and hear the sound of that. But one little girl, I said, anyone have any questions? And she, she says, I have one. And I go over and she goes, what's your favorite color? <laughs> and Brooke says, blue, what's yours? You know, and even asking the what's yours, I mean, the interaction was so authentic. And it's just a moment. You got 40 minutes of watching Brooke Henderson practice and play here. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat, so uh, enjoy it, everybody. Uh, our big event here at the Kevin Ham Kids of the Course Classic. I am Kevin. That is not the exciting thing. Here comes your guest of honor. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> and her partner out of the road, uh, her sister, Brittany Henderson. <laughs> so you're all very lucky young people to be here. Uh, you know, in front of what I think is the most exciting thing in Canadian sport right now, our young girl from uh, Smith's Falls, just up the street, and her sister traveling the world and setting records and really setting the world on fire, especially the golf world. So we're all pretty lucky to be here. Uh, Brooke and Brittany flew in, when did you fly in? Yes. Yesterday. So she was just playing down in Texas. As you all know, Miss Henderson, 
Uh, one over in Hawaii on the Big Island. Is that the Big Island? Uh, yeah, Oahu. I mean, it's hard to keep those Hawaiian islands straight. <laughs> it is. <laughs> one in Oahu, and uh, by how many? By four. And if you could have put it on Saturday, I was watching that. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, you could have been up by 12. You were hitting it right by the pin every single hole. It was great. It was yeah. great. Anyway, so uh, at the Lotte tournament, Lotte? Yeah. Can you like Okay. <laughs> and that was uh, Brooke's sixth win on the LPGA Tour. Does anybody know the one Canadian who's won more events than that? There's one Canadian in the history of golf who's won more than six. Does anyone know the answer to that? You'll get a Brooke Henderson autograph visor or cap? Yes, yes. Sandra Post. Sandra Post, that's the answer. That's right. She was a wonderful player as well. And, uh, but I think you're going to pass her this year, probably, so. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, how old are you now, bro? I'm 20. 20 years old, and the biggest win of all was the KPMG uh, Women's PGA Championship, a major, which was in 2016, right? That's right. What number was that? That was win number two. That was win, and win number one was a runaway as well. You're kind of like yes. Tiger Woods like that. Yeah, eight shots. Eight shots, yeah, in the, in the Cambria Portland Classic, correct? That's correct. And you were you a Monday qualifier that week? I was. I Monday qualified, shot 68, I believe, got into the field, and then ended up winning to get my LPJ tour card. So it was really a dream come true. Special week. Now tell everybody what Monday qualifying is. You, want, you kids all know what Monday qualifying is? No? Well, let's hear what Monday qualifying is. Uh, so people without status on the LPJ tour. So like me, I was a professional, but I didn't really have anywhere to play, any tournaments, so I flew out to Portland, which is like a five-hour flight. Uh, teed it up on Monday morning against, I think, 30, maybe 30 plus players. Uh, 18 holes, and you have to finish in the top two to get a spot into the game. So it's really, you just gotta make a lot of birdies and you know hope that you play well enough that one day to make it into the field, and I was able to do it that week. Yeah, really special. I mean, think about that, everybody. As a rookie, a Monday qualifier, to then go out and win a tournament by eight strokes on a professional tour. I mean, other than Tiger Woods on the men's tour, it's really an unheard of accomplishment. So we got our own tiger here. Huh? <laughs> you favorite, what's your favorite animal? Maybe, what's your favorite animal? Uh, gator? I remember your old, yes. uh, I remember your old gator head cover. Do you still have that in there? I don't. No, I took it out. Right, okay. So uh, Brooke plays a lot of tournaments, as we all know. She's been up to number two in the world. And how old were you when you were number two in the world? Bro? I was 18. 18 years old. Yes. So what are your goals this year? What what goals are left for this year? Uh, you know, getting my first win early in the season is really exciting because it kind of takes a lot of pressure off. And, you know, now I can go out and try to contend every single week, which is really cool. And, you know, being able to play against the best in the world um, every single week. You know, I have friends from all over the place and just, you know, be able to compete against them. and try to get better every single day as a person too. So, you know, I would love to get my CME ranking in the top six. So I have a chance to win a million dollars at the end of the year. Woo! That would be pretty cool. I think you're five right now, right? Yes. CME or fifth right now, yeah. Right now. So as long as I stay in that top six uh, and I play well in the last event of the year, I could walk away with a million dollars. So pretty cool. That's, pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That, that'll happen. All right, let's warm up a little bit here. So we want all of you to watch Brooke's uh, incredible athleticism as she hits balls. And Brittany and I are going to chat a little bit and tell stories about you and secrets and things you don't want people to know. You want to do all that. Do you have a mic, Brit? So we'll talk. So really, and many of you may not know this, but Brittany was a superstar golfer herself and was actually on Team Canada when you were how old? 14 years old. So Brittany was I was amazing <laughs> Pointing that out. Pardon? Yeah. What's that, Brooke? I was uh, 14 when I made the team, too. And just trying to make that clear. By how many months? <laughs> Who was older by how many months? Uh, have you guys tracked that? No. No, huh? That's a good question. Well, you'll have to figure that one out tonight. That sounds like a, a, a great uh, dinner topic. Anyway, so Brittany uh, was a wonderful player. Where did you play your college golf, Brittany? at Coastal Carolina, which is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Where Dustin Johnson played? Yes. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And then uh, you had your own career going, but just decided that this little spitfire over here was a priority, and the two of you are now traveling the world as a team, right? 
Yes, exactly. I played one year on the Symmetra Tour, which is sort of a lead-up tour to the LPGA. And it was good, it was fun, but um, it's a lot more fun when you have someone to travel with and it just makes everything you do a little bit more okay. enjoyable than being by yourself traveling to hotel to hotel. So we are really enjoying doing it together. So we know you guys grew up in Smith Falls. We all know your story. Your dad was your coach and, and guided you both along the way. He's done an amazing job. At what point did uh, Brooke start following you around the golf course and try to keep up with you? Were you 11 and she was nine or what was the situation with that? How old were you guys when you started? Um, I was nine when I started and I'm six years older than Brooke so she was about three and it was pretty much right around then that she tried to come everywhere. <laughs> so she was pretty young. Um, and as she got older, she would always be hanging around and trying to beat me and everything. But luckily I beat her yeah. pretty much every all time. All the time, you know, yeah. all the time. That's well, the best world. Yeah, yeah. All the time. <laughs> We're on the street and she used to beat you easy. <laughs> and then when was the first time you broke car? Can you remember back that bro? Um, I don't know, I remember when I first started, I was nine years old, and I shot 72 on nine holes. Okay, <laughs> cool. That's kind of cool. And I thought that was pretty good. But after that, I think maybe I broke car when I was 11 or 12. That's amazing. And how about you, bro? Uh, I was just trying to think. I'm not actually sure. No? When, do you have a better guess, B? No. I would think probably around 10 or 11. So we had these uh, girls here last year, and then when did you decide to make golf a career, both of you? Brooke, maybe you first. When did you decide that this is what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Uh, well, you know, growing up chasing after Brea, as she mentioned, you know, I was always trying to beat her, trying to outdrive her, and being six years older, she was a lot taller, a lot stronger, but it kind of gave me that competitiveness that I needed, and, you know, it made me kind of swing the way that I swing right now. It's not a normal swing, but it's pretty powerful. You can get the ball up there a long way. So, so was that Brooke, then let me jump in, was that, and by the way, I think your swing is awesome. It's Thanks. very athletic. No, I think it's awesome. Uh, were you trying to out hit Brittany and swinging longer like that, or did you have hand-me-down clubs that were a little heavier? How do you think you developed that big backswing, that kind of, you know, great move of yours now that we all see when you play on the LPGA Tour? Yeah, I think a lot of it was, I wasn't really focused on technique too much. I was just trying to get the ball out there as far as I could. Um, and, you know, I think trying to outdrive Brit was really a big goal of mine yeah, growing that's up. Awesome. Uh, and it kind of led to a lot of things. Um, so I have this vision of you seven and she's 12 and you're doing anything you can to out hit her out there, right? Yes, that's correct. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. That's really great. Uh, okay, so on the road, let's do a little bit of information on the road. Some of you were here last year. We had a great fireside chat with terrible weather. But, uh, you know, I think it's neat for the kids to hear what it's like on the LPGA Tour. I think everybody put up your hand if you want to be a PGA or an LPGA player when you grow up. I'm sure there's many of you in the crowd. So let's hear about life a little bit on the road. Uh, who's the boss? First question, who's the boss on the road, Brittany? Well, on the course, Brooke is the boss. But off the course, I like to think we're a team or maybe I take the lead a little bit. <laughs> And how many weeks in a row will you guys typically down the course? I know that you travel a lot. How many tournaments last year, Brooke? I think I played 32 events on the LPJ Tour, which is quite a few. That was number one, right? On the tour? Yes, yeah. that was number one. Most played. I love those sketchers, by the way. Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. So, uh, do you organize the host? So, how does that work on the LPJ Tour? Do you book the hotels, does the tour contact you and help you with that? Does your agency, I know your agent Kevin Hopkins is here from IMG today, does he do that with you? Uh, and who rents the cars and decides what kind of car to get? How does all of that work, Brittany? Um, usually I'm in charge. I actually sort of enjoy doing all that research and looking at what's the best flight, the shortest and the most efficient way to get there. Um, and then I'll look into rental cars and hotels as well. Um, the tour usually sends out a fact sheet where they say just basic facts for the event that week. It's at this golf course, it starts this day, and um, the purse is you're playing for this much money. Yeah. Um, and this is the hotel we recommend staying at. So they usually give you a recommendation, but then you're free to choose. So 
sometimes we stay at their hotel and sometimes we try and to do what's your favorite car to rent do you rent a minivan or do you rent do you normally have a courtesy van or have you ever like rented a convertible mustang or anything like that what do you rent when you're on the road we're pretty boring yeah. the travel yeah. wagon a travel wagon <laughs> yeah it's like a caravan wow girls <laughs> are going crazy <laughs> That's great. Uh, I don't know if you can all hear. Try to listen to Brittany, uh, or sorry, Brooks Impact. It's a, there's a sound when a tour pro hits a golf ball. You don't hear it anywhere else. And, you know, it's the soul of the club impacting the turf so perfectly. It's got a real thumping sound, right? We're going to hear it right here, Brooks. It's got a real thump to it, right? The divots aren't too deep, but she's really hitting that ball solid. And I haven't, I didn't hit balls yesterday, which is pretty rare for me. So I was a little nervous. How's it feeling? How's it feeling? Okay. Uh, a little tight, but we're working it out. All right, favorite food on the road? Last question on the road. It was uh, Chipotle, I think, last year. Are you sick of Chipotle yet, or are you still eating that all the time? Yeah, after you eat it every day, you kind of get, you need to change it out. You chicken and smoke thing. Yeah. But, um, we still eat Chipotle a lot, Subway. We love Subway. Um, <laughs> you girls are crazy in your minivans <laughs> and your Subways. That's fantastic. And uh, what about uh, Chick-fil-A? Has it gotten That's yes. my sweet spot. Yeah. Chick-fil-A is amazing. Those chicken minis in the morning. Ooh, wicked. Anyway, okay. And uh, when do you play again? You're home for how long? Um, home until Saturday or Sunday, which is really nice because I haven't been here since Christmas time. And I was only home for 10 days then. So it's been really nice to come home, see my own bed last night, see some family, see some friends, and you know, I'm just trying to enjoy all the luck. Yeah, are you, I, I know you guys love the road, right? You, you love the Smith Falls and being at home with family, but I know you both love the road. Favorite place in the world? What's your favorite place, Brittany? Mm, I really like Singapore. Yeah, Brooke said that to me quietly earlier today. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. What is it about Singapore? It's a very cool city. It's a, it's on an island and it's really small, but everything's built up. So we have huge buildings and they try to keep the city really, really clean. Someone once told me that you could eat off the subway floor in Singapore. And I didn't think they were being very accurate until I went there. And I think you actually could. If you really? dropped your sandwich, I think you'd be fine to eat Amazing. it. Amazing. It was illegal to chew gum there. Mm -hmm. So if you ever go there, don't bring any gum in. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? And what about in the U.S.? Where's your favorite? What's your favorite golf course? I mean, Sahali, where you won your major, has got to be up there. But what's your favorite golf course to play down in the States? Uh, well, I've won it twice in Portland. So I'd have to have to say that is my favorite place. And you know, hopefully later this year I can make it three. Yeah, okay. yeah hopefully again. Oh, bro. Okay, and is the grass in the northwest or something? Do you, do you, what do you like about it? I mean... I look at Sahali, there are a lot of pine trees, kind of like this area, but what makes you comfortable in Portland? Yeah, I think just growing up here, uh, the courses are extremely similar, you know, it's usually pretty tight, the grass is very similar, um, you know, putting on bent grass, which is usually what we have here, uh, it's very similar, so it just reminds me of growing up and hanging out in some schools, uh, that's kind of that comfort thing, and the, the courses just seem to suit right now let's get a little bit into ball hitting here what are you working on right now in your golf swing oh uh, well i'm really unique in how i really don't have any swing thoughts at all which is pretty unusual pretty rare um so my swing i try to try to work things out with Britt if i have some problems but it's really really simple you know most of the time i'm just trying to focus on the target or the yardage that i'm trying to hit it so you know right now i'm hitting an eight iron but I'm just trying to hit it out of that pin sign out there. Um, not really yardage, but just line. Is all sponsor mention, right. sponsor mention. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay, and Brittany, what do you see in her golf swing when she's right on or where she's just a little off? Is there a little area of her golf swing you look for to see what exactly is happening with it? Um, we just always go back to basics if there's anything a little off. So sometimes we check her alignment, her feet, and Brooke's not really like a typical person where you want your feet pointing straight at the target. She sometimes aims a little right and she'll, she hits like a mini pole a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, so we know that, that's where she hits the ball the best. And a lot of the time you just have to know yourself and, your play, and where you play the best. So you're going back to basics, but also knowing what's good for you. Absolutely, absolutely. 
And I love, you know, people always ask me, because I teach golf, and you, you find your swing, all kinds of problems, and I don't. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're balanced and athletic and really solid, Sometimes when you're on a high, you think you can make every putt. And you wonder why you, you couldn't before. And then you go through low times and you think that you're never going to make anything again. And it's just kind of, that's just life. And you got to learn with, uh, go with it, learn from it. Um, and just, you know, embrace every opportunity to learn something. And I think over the last four years that I've been on the LPJ Tour, that's probably the most important thing that I've learned is just kind of, dealing with the highs and lows and, and knowing that it's always going to turn out the way it should. You just got to continue to work hard and stay patient. Yeah, optimism is really important for a professional athlete, right? And resilience and optimism. And how many fire changes in the last uh, three years on tour? Like 20. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, just trying, to, just trying to figure it out, teach the other fighters a lesson. You know, put them in the That's right, put them in the closet for a while. They know they have to do the dishes if they don't, <laughs> uh, if they don't make up. Uh, I know Dave uh, is here from Ping and has that gold putter. Maybe we should get that out now, guys, and show it to everybody. So you may not know this, but when you win a golf tournament and you're a Ping staffer, okay, here comes Andre Boris, responsible for bringing all you guys in. Let's give Andre a little hand, everybody. So maybe you can tell the story for way to go picking the biggest, heaviest putter too, right? Yeah. The most amount of gold. So uh, Ping have a very special tradition. Maybe you can explain that. Oh uh, yeah. So the Ping Vault, it's pretty amazing. You know, the first time I went to Phoenix, Ping's headquarters, they took me on a tour, and I went into this room, uh, and as soon as I walked in, it was so shiny, so bright. I almost need sunglasses because all of these gold putters were just kind of staring at me. Um, and I was like, wow, I really want some putters in there, and, and now I do. Um, and winning for my first major, it was solid gold. So I have a solid gold putter. Um, you guys all hear that? I mean, they give you, they make a solid gold putter. That thing weighs a lot, right? They're heavy. They're heavy. Is the, the gold one, is it the exact same weight as the normal gold putter, or is it way heavier? It's way heavier. Yeah. yeah. Hide it away. Don't tell any of us where it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> because that's a pretty valuable thing. Absolutely. Um, so it's a really meaningful gift um, from Ping. And, you know, to, to hold salt and gold is kind of an amazing feeling. It is an amazing feeling. So we'll pass that, or Andre will carry that around to show all of you. but. That's the exact putter that Brooke used to win the KPMG women's uh, 
uh, BJW, not the exact one, but the exact style. So we'll bring that around so all of you can see it. You'll notice Andre had gloves on, almost like... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Andre. <laughs> I yeah. just touched it. No, no, oh, broke. It's ruined now. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot like the Stanley Cup. They really protect them and uh, they can tarnish. Can it tarnish? Hey, Andre, why do you protect yeah. it so much? You can tarnish a bit? Yeah, the gold plating, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, very cool. Now, how do you like this, everybody? I, I will tell you, if you watch this young lady hit a golf ball, there might be three or four other girls on the LPGA Tour who can hit it like this. And the sound I described earlier, and the athleticism really, you know, not too many of the ladies out there can hit the golf ball like that. And uh, it's amazing for me to be close to it here, and I hope you're all really enjoying it. What do you mean? Good point, Chris. Oh, okay. All good. What's next on the schedule, Brittany? We are going to Virginia, Kings yeah. Mill. It's, oh, that's one of your favorites, I think, right? Yeah, we really like it. It's a really good golf course, and I think it suits Burke's game really well, even though I think she's finished at 20, around 25th the last couple of years. We feel it's really one that suits her game. It's got the tree-lined look. It looks a lot like up here. Everything's really plush. Yeah. And Where's the next major, ladies? U.S. Open uh, in three weeks. And where is that? It's in Alabama. So it's going to be super, More. super hot. But, you know, we're really looking forward to it. The U.S. Open is probably my favorite tournament of the year. You know, everything's bigger. Uh, bigger first. Best golf courses in the United States. Um, network television. You know, everything is so fun about it. And just the atmosphere when you step out, it's like nothing you've ever really experienced. And, you know, I just love that feeling of, you know, hitting my first tee shot on Thursday morning and, you know, trying to contend for the America's national. Unbelievable, and that was kind of your hello world moment, I would say, as far as the rest of the world, right? I'm sure it opened some eyes up on the LPG. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here comes the big dog now. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm sure it opened a lot of eyes when you finished 10th in the U.S. Open. Uh, yeah, so I was an amateur uh, playing against the best in the world at Pinehurst, which is you know very iconic, and it actually it was the first U.S. Open, I believe, that the men played the week before the women at the same course. Uh, so it was pretty amazing to show up Sunday afternoon and watch the men's final round of US Open and then tee it up the next morning in a practice round. Um, so it was really a lot of fun and that kind of gave me a lot of confidence to know that I was 16, I believe, and I knew that I could compete against the best in the world and that gave me that a little bit extra momentum to, to practice a little bit harder to visualize myself in those moments and you know hope that one day I would get that win on the LPJ tour. I know uh, you were the number one ranked amateur on the planet when you turned pro. Does that ever freak you out? It's pretty I mean, cool. I mean think about how many women and girls and ladies play golf and you're the number one ranked in the on the planet. That's pretty neat. Yeah and that as well you know I won a lot of tournaments that summer. It seemed like everything I was playing in I contending in and my big goal was to, to be number one before I turned pro um, and to be able to do it. Actually, it was on my eight, 17th birthday that the world rankings changed and I was number one in the world. So that's probably the best birthday present I've ever, that's so I've ever cool. gotten. All right, here it is, everybody. Let's enjoy this for just a second. Listen to the sound again and we'll ask her about her driver swing. I think best driver on the LPJ Tour? I think so. I think so, too. I, I would agree. Too. You would agree? No, not a girl. <laughs> Close to well, 290. 
That's pretty great. Hey, everybody, let's get our kids. Come on and sit right down here. Anyone want to sit right down behind Brooke? Come on closer. She's not going to hurt you. Anyone want to sit down here? Come on up. Let's get really close and watch this driver go. Come on, quickly. Down here, guys. Just cross leg it on the grass. Come on. Come on, young baby. Have a seat. That's awesome, guys. Let's get nice and close. You got to see this thing from as close as possible. Right, Brooke? That's right. There's some serious speed here, everybody. Maybe the best driver in the world. Uh, using a Ping G400 driver, I might add, Andre. <laughs> right? And, and how long has this club been in your bag, bro? Uh, this has been since around December. So a few months. Um, but this is just the, the new head that came out last summer. I switched in the winter, and I've been really loving it. Great. A different shaft, I see. You, you had the blue shaft in your G driver, and now you've gone to a a little bit different golf shaft is this one a little stiffer it just feels different to you uh i do believe it's a little bit stiffer i'm trying to get stronger and trying to hit a little bit further so Ping does an amazing job making sure that all my clubs fit me properly and so that i can you know swing and have the maximum output from that pound for pound i mean you've got to be up there period right crazy so what what do you what do you see you know what i love about brooks game and a lot of you can learn look at the speed with which he hits a driver there's not a lot of time, right? He fires that club in about 20 seconds from first standing over it. And you all notice no practice swings? That's something a lot of you juniors and even adults can learn from. She doesn't take five practice swings. She just stands over that ball, she feels it, gets herself ready to go, and then hits it. Have you ever, when you were younger, did you use a practice swing, Brooke? Uh, yes, and usually uh, in the tournament I'll take one practice swing. I'll step behind the ball, try to visualize, uh, and then, you know, step in and try to hit it pretty, pretty soon. What concentration? <laughs> Tiger with a stop. Good, good concentration. And then, what do you look for with the driver? Guys? Uh, you know what I love too. When uh, once you hit a shot, you pick up the tee in like 0.0 of a second. Like, it's fantastic. I can always tell, and, and you can too, when you're watching her play. Brooks barely finished her golf swing, which is already picking up her tee. She knows exactly where that ball's going. What's your favorite shot with a driver? Do you like to work it one way or the other? Uh, I like to hit a draw with my driver, preferably. Those ones weren't really drawing, but I think the one was holding them up a little bit. Um, but preferably, I like to hit a draw just because you put a little bit more overspin on it and it goes a little bit further. Um, with my irons, I generally like to hit a cut so that it comes up, has more backspin on it, and can stop a little bit sooner. Got it. Awesome. And what club is this you're hitting now? Uh, this is a three wood. And how far would you hit a three wood? Uh, I usually carry around 215. Sometimes when it's a little bit warmer, I can get it closer to like 220, 225. Just kind of depends on the temperature and how well I'm striking it that day. How are you feeling today? Feeling all right. Answering questions as you get ready. That's good. Now, how are you feeling? Still good. Still good. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, that's awesome. Um, I think we get, anyone, any little ones have a question? You, any of you guys want to ask Brooke or Brittany a question? Does anyone have a question for the Henderson girls? We'll keep chatting away here if not, but if any of you have a question at all, yes, young lady, hang on, I'll bring the mic over. Hang on one second. That doesn't scare you, does it? Good. But all right, you ask your question. What's your name? What's your favorite, oh, Karen, what's your favorite color? My favorite color? I like blue. What about you? I like blue too. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, hang on. We got another little question here. Excellent question, by the way. Well done. Uh, let's hear your name. And where did you come from, young lady? Today. I mean, where, did, where are you visiting from? You live in Ottawa. Okay. And what's your name? Fiona. Fiona. Nice to meet you. And what would you like to ask for? is an awesome question. Let's take our conversation there. So if you're just starting golf, let's ask Brittany first, actually. Brittany, what's your recommendation on how to start playing the game and what your expectations should be? Um, I started playing just because my dad played and I always wanted to head out there with him. And so there wasn't a lot of kids when I started playing, but I would just always play with my dad and my dad's friends. And then when Brooke started playing, we could always play together. But I think the most important thing is just you, you, st you do it for fun at the start and then 
eventually if you get good at it, you can focus more on that, but you just always go out and have fun and compete with people. How about you, Brooke? I know chasing around your sister was really the, the most important thing for you to do back there, but if you were a little five-year-old girl right now or a little boy, what would your advice be? Uh, yeah, you know, Britt kind of nailed it there. It's just to, to go out and have fun and find somebody that you love playing with. You know, for me, it was Britt and my dad. Uh, also, my cousin Ryan, he played a lot. Um, and I just really enjoyed going out and having fun with them. And we would be at the golf course all day, you know, just hitting balls, laughing, joking. Um, and then, you know, then we got kind of good because we were spending so much time there and we were enjoying it that it kind of became something that I wanted to do for a really long time. And I think with golf, there are so many different uh, opportunities that you can gain from it. You know, friendships, as I mentioned before, you know, I have friends all over the world, in Korea, Thailand, Singapore, Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere. Um, and I think those friendships are extremely valuable. Um, and also, you know, trying to make your school team or your provincial team, national team, uh, all goals and all really amazing experiences that all come just from spending, you know, five minutes out of range one day and, and falling in love with the game. What's the most fun thing? What was the most fun thing as a child and what's the most fun thing now? And that's a question for both of you. What was the most fun thing when you were young? Uh, I love to hit driver. Yeah? <laughs> I still do. And you, Brittany? Um, I always like to putt, and yeah. I like to beat people in putting contests or so try to beat the dishes, them. So they do the dishes. Yes, yeah. she still beats me. Yeah. She doesn't play in two years, and she still beats me in putting contests. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine I don't like that very much. And what about now, guys? Uh, I mean, it, it's such a different life. Uh, it's hard to even describe to you kids traveling the world and meeting responsibilities, sponsors, and deadlines. I think being able to travel everywhere. You know, I've been to 20 plus countries and I'm only 20 years old. And most of those countries I've been to multiple times, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, I love to compete. I love competition. And I'm playing against the best in the world every single week. It's like in a mini Olympics every single week. Um, you know, I think there's like 60 plus or 80 plus countries that are represented on the LPJ Tour every single week. And, you know, I think I take a lot of it for for granted, but, you know, I get to see different cultures, different languages, different accents, um, like every single day. And You learned to count to five in Korean. Yeah, I did last week. Let's hear it. Uh, sam <laughs> sa All right. So <laughs> next time I am playing with one of my good friends, MJ, I'm going to yell or say her scorecard in Korean uh, at the end of the round. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I try to, try to learn you know, something from every language um, out on tour. And it's just something fun and something a little bit different too. You guys must miss friends and parents. Do you get lonely? you guys ever get lonely out on the tour? Uh, we have each other, so we don't get too lonely. It's, it's pretty fun. And um, our parents um, try to come to quite a few events as well. But we always feel very supported by the fans at every event. And yeah, so we're always, we're always having fun. By the way, they're here. I know I see your mom over here. Darlene, wave your hand. There's Darlene. Where's Dave? Where's Dave? He's hiding. Oh, he's hiding behind all the kids. Fantastic, Dave. So do you guys ever go out and still play competitions against your dad? How's your dad's game? It's still pretty good. He doesn't yeah. play very much, but he likes to hit drive off the deck occasionally. You guys, you guys have a home. Does it work? Yeah, it's still really good. good. That's, neat. that's neat. And you guys have a home down in Florida now for winter training, right? Yes, that's right. Um, it's really nice. You know, growing up uh, Canadian winters, it's really difficult to play golf. Um, you know, growing up, I hit a lot into nets, simulators, um, anything that I could really do to swing a golf club. We did, and uh, also, you know, I played hockey for eight years when I was until I was 14. So it was so much fun. And I think, you know, playing a bunch of different sports is really important. You know, you learn a lot of athleticism and you learn a lot of things that 
can transfer over to golf, and I would really recommend that for all of you guys, just to kind of have fun and, and find your passion that way. Interesting. I know they love that story in the States. I saw you do an interview a, a couple of, it might have been at the Lote, where they were asking you about your hockey. You were a goalie, right, Brooke? Yes, that's right. Were you a good goalie, Brooke? Um, <laughs> I would like to think I was. Did you cover up that five hole, or what um, was your weakness in nets? Uh, what was I your don't strength? know. Let's focus on the strength. Yeah, let's focus on the strength. She was good. She was a good goalie, yeah, and, and did you play, Brooke? No, I didn't. Did, did, no. What did you do in the winter time besides hitting golf balls into simulators and nets? Did you play any other sports? Uh, no, I just played some sports at school, and then I did indoor golf in the winter time. Um, but Brooks' team won the Silver Stick tournament, right? A lot of yeah, a lot of guys will know what that is. We had um, we had some really good teams come to Swiss Falls a couple of years, and I think just you know mentally, I gained a lot from it. Um, being a goalie, you're dependent on a lot, and. Mentally, I think I got a lot of my strength from there, um, and that it's transferred over to the golf course. Um, you know, when I have a really pressure-filled shot, I kind of know how to deal with it and handle it a little bit better, um, just from playing hockey and trying to save the puck. And Dad was a goalie for the '67s, right? Uh, Dave made it to the NHL or to the uh, OHL, so it, it ran in the family, I guess. Do you ever take shots on each other now, ever? Uh, when you're home, do you have a net anywhere, or do you ever have a little fun with that, or is hockey not in the, uh, not kind of on your agenda anymore? Uh, actually, I actually haven't skated in four years, maybe. So no more hockey, uh, just kind of focusing on golf. I did start playing tennis a little bit in the winter um, down in Florida, and that was pretty fun. How much do you practice, uh, girls, when you're out on the tour? I know you're one of the most popular, if not the most popular player on the tour. So you've got a lot of media responsibilities. And then if you think about it, everybody, you're traveling on Monday and Tuesday to the next event. And so how much time do you actually get to practice out there, Brooke? Do you, do you make it part of every day or do you just warm up a little bit or does it depend on the week? Um, yeah, so normally our week looks like Monday travel day. Um, most of the time we will go out Monday afternoon after we travel from wherever we were uh, to either walk the course play nine holes, or just hit a few balls. Um, Tuesday is a practice round day, so it's really important to go out, scout the course, know um, what holes you can make birdie on, what holes you need to make par on, know different angles to come into the green, uh, know how to use different slopes, and just get a really good feel for the course. After we do that, then I usually have media for you know half an hour or an hour on Tuesdays. Then Wednesday is pro-am day, so we go out with four amateurs and we just have a fun day of golf, just kind of more relaxed. Thursday through Sunday is competition. Um, and then Monday morning we're up and traveling again. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I like to practice almost every day, but if I get a little tired, I, I will take a day off like yesterday. emotional and mental strength is Brittany. What's the strongest? She seems pretty determined here. She's not gonna let this go. Awesome. There it goes. You can sure see that one curving. You're like Bubba Watson. Fantastic. <laughs> What's your uh, what do you think her, her strongest mental and emotional asset is as a player? Um I think just she never gives up and she's always always pushing herself to get better. Um, every day, you know, we feel that there's ways we can improve, and I think that's an important attitude to take, you know. You always want to try to improve in every area of your life, and she does that really well. Um, she's also just got this fire inside, and I don't know where you get that from. Maybe it was from hockey, um, but she doesn't like to lose. Maybe it was from losing to me all those years, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, mom liked that one. <laughs> well, you know, it is an interesting, you're an interesting combination of, of, uh, 
you know, emotional skyline because you're the most pleasant, easygoing, accommodating person. And I want to tell everybody, we work with Brooke and Brittany behind the scenes, and they're as sweet and uh, easygoing as you think they are. It's, it's really a, a pleasure always. But then you get on the course, and I think you want to rope rip the person's throat <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I think you need to have that a little bit to, to play sports. But I think the th cool thing about golf is that it's really a respectful game, and everybody, every player respects each other. And you know, you, you do want the best for everybody, but you just want to be a little bit better. What would you say, Brooke? It's sometimes tempting uh, with all golfers, but sometimes little ones, to maybe move their ball a little bit to make a putt easier or get a little better lie. I don't know if uh, what you say about that, but our sport has a lot of integrity, right? We always want to leave the ball where it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think golf is amazing that way where it teaches a lot of great values that you can use in life as well. You know, honesty, integrity, perseverance. It's a really tough game and you really have to stick at it um, a lot of the time. You, you, know, you have to work hard and I just, you know, going back to respect, I think you got to respect the course, you got to respect the people in your group and you got to respect the fellow competitors as well. Yeah, in the end, you've got your integrity and your honesty out there, right, Brooke? And yeah. And, your, uh, and how you handle yourself. I mean, I've never seen you slam a club. I've never seen you, you know, really look angry. I can tell when you're a little upset, but uh, do you try to hide your emotions or are you just calm out there? Or how do you learn to carry yourself so well on the golf course? Uh, you know, I think I was talking a little bit earlier about the highs and lows, and there's always going to be those. And you kind of just try to not to stay that even keel, I guess. and. You know, there's going to be adrenaline, there's going to be times where you're really excited, you know, you're six under through six holes and you've birdied everything and you're, you're, you're just flying so far and you just kind of realize that it's not always going to be like that, so really enjoy it. And then, you know, sometimes you make six bogeys in a row and you feel terrible, um, but you know, it's always going to turn around, you just got to, you know, kind of persevere through it. Um, I know that there's a lot of inner strength in all of us and you just have to kind of channel that and find it. It's important to focus, right? It's hard to find that inner strength every day. You must have tired days, Brittany. Do you ever have days where the two of you feel a little sluggish with jet lag? Or how do you get through things like that out there? Um, Brooke is really good at sort of dodging herself and knowing when she's tired. Um, I think that's, that's a really important gift uh, that she has. Just from my own personal experience, when I was always trying to get better, I would work so hard and I would practice so many hours. And by the time the tournament came around, I was I was so tired. And what Brooke does is she works hard, but she knows her own limits. So she said, you know, I'm, I'm a little tired today. I said, Brooke, I think you should put. No, I'm good. Brooke <laughs> is always trying to make me practice. <laughs> and after I just finished, you know, three hours practicing, after even playing in the morning, and then I finally am done hitting the car, and Brooke's like, are you sure you're done? I think maybe you should go hit some more balls. And I'm like, no, B. We're done. I just always loved to practice so much, and um, but Brooke is really good at managing her energy. She'll just say, no, I'm too tired to practice today. Exactly. Favorite TV show? You guys into Netflix when you're on the road? Uh, yes. Netflix is definitely a go-to for us. There's a lot of long nights that a good show is... Binge watching in Singapore or wherever? Yes. And what is the favorite show? Do you have one? Um, we watch... watch Broadchurch? That's great. I love Broadchurch. No, I've never seen that. Check that one out. It's a British uh, detective one in a small town. Very cool. Anyway, for... You like Broadchurch too, Lisa, didn't you? Yeah, Broadchurch is very good. All right, let's finish off, Brooke. Hit a couple of flop shots here for us. If you can, and can we finish off with the big stick? Just a few drives with the kids nice and close, and then we'll get our autographs and our photos done. Does anyone else have a question for... Young Miss Henderson, either one of the sisters. Yes, young man. Let's get over here and your name is? I know, Atlas, you're in our initiative. How are you, young man? Good, you better play yet? That boy, well done. All right, so let's hear uh, your question for Brooke or Brittany. Have you ever gotten a hole in one? Yes, I have five. <laughs> How many do you have, Atlas? None yet. Well, you got, you're only five behind Brooke Henderson. <laughs> Anyone else have a question for the lady of the day? Yes, Miss. How are you? Now, you got here very early today, didn't you? What time did you get here? I know, 10.52. I think that's...
that's exactly when you got here. And did you get here because your daddy was excited or because you were excited? You were excited. I don't blame you. And what's your name, young lady? Marley. And what's your question? Have you ever been nervous before tournaments? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think nervous before tournaments. Yeah, nervous before tournaments. Yeah, I think 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 nervous before tournaments. Yeah, um, but you learn how your body reacts to it. And, you know, for me, on the first tee, I am nervous. I have a lot of adrenaline, but adrenaline actually makes you stronger. So you can use that to your advantage. So, you know, I try to hit the ball a little bit further. And you still gotta, you know, take a couple deep breaths, kind of relax a little bit, focus on what you're doing, but then use it. You know, you're a little bit stronger. Hit it a little bit further and out competitors. You got it, Marley? I think, you know, kids, nerves are a part of golf. It means you're excited and you're, it's important to you. I, the nerves never go away, right, Cook? That's right. But it's the fear. If you're scared of the result or you're scared because you haven't prepared enough, that's the thing that I think makes people deep down really nervous. But the, the pressure is actually a good thing. You want to feel pressure. That's why you practice all the time, to get out there and check it out. I mean, Brooke was 16 and she practiced her whole life and came 10th in the U.S. Open, right? So when you can go out there and test yourself, that's what competitive sports is really all about. And she's one of the best at it. Let's just enjoy this next couple of drives. How much loft on that driver, Brooke? Uh, this is nine. Nine, nine degrees? Yes. And how long is that driver? The most famous thing about your equipment. How long is that driver? It is 48 inches. Um, so it's pretty tall. Uh, and I think around three inches longer than the average driver. Two inches maybe. So I get a little bit extra distance. Um, and I hit it pretty straight, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. And now we noticed you're choking up a little bit. Brittany, maybe you can talk about that. I know it's comfortable. Uh, is there a specific reason you do it, or that uh, Brooke does it, Brittany, or does it just feel comfortable? Um, I think it's where she's comfortable, but she also started with my club, so, uh, so when I was younger, well, I was six years older than Brooke, so my clubs were a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, so I think she held it there to be comfortable, and now she just does it because she likes it. All right, this is a request from King today, Andre Boris, who's... Again, uh, the person who invited all of you lucky people here wants you to hit it from the end, right at the 48 inch. You say you've never done this, bro. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared. No, it'll be okay. Well, let's hope it doesn't break. <laughs> I wouldn't feel very good about this if we broke her gamer club. But uh, let's try one. Let's see right at the end. So it's a very long club. It's actually two and a quarter inches longer than Ping standard. So. And even two and three quarters longer than the, the, the tour shaft in the ping. So let's try it. Look at the concentrate. I got her now. I, I think she's really <laughs> focusing now. Look at her adjust that T. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Brittany? Is it going to be okay? Should I T it higher? Lower? Same? Maybe. I think the same. Or a little higher. Boy, oh boy. Huh? This is very We've got them thinking now, don't we? This is great. No practice swing? No practice swing. You're a professional. Is that, is that where I should hold it? Yeah, right at the end. Oh, no, you're good. No, no, that's good. Looks good to me. Oh, look at this all of a sudden now. Oh, boy. Here we go. I just wanted to move my hands. Okay, yeah, so it feels weird. Them. I It feels different. So her face is just a little tiny bit over there. She'll adjust. She's the champ. This one's going to be better. I actually think, you know, if you go too long, everybody, it's great advice uh, through Ping and their club thing. Not a girl. If you go too, too long. That was pretty good. That thing
thing jumped. That didn't have much spin on it either. But if you go too, too long, right, you can't hit the, the center of the face every time, which is the most important thing with every club in your bag. So Brooke has found the perfect spot for her to hit that golf club from. And you can blame Andre Boris for that request, by the way, Brooke. <laughs> yeah, All right, two more. Any more questions? Let's finish up with a couple more kid questions if we have them, and then we'll move on. Yes, young man, let me jump over to you here. Give us your name, and then ask your question, okay? Arden. Arden? Yeah. How, how fast is your club head speed? Um, that is a good question. Do you know that? Andre might know that. Yeah. Andre Boris would probably know that. Club head speed? 100? 100 miles an hour, she swings that out, which is pretty crazy fast. Very good. Thanks for the question, Arden. One more question? Are you okay? Oh, in the back? Yeah, can you yell out, young man? Yeah, sure. What's your name? Marcus. What's your question? How much physical training do you do in a week? Did you hear that, Brooke? How much physical training do you do? Um, you know, fortunately, we're still pretty young, so we don't do a ton. You know, some girls, they do twice a day. Um, which is pretty crazy considering that they're playing 18 holes and are still practicing. Um, we like to do something early in the week just to, you know, stay strong, maintain, 